Hey, how's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my blog. All right, okay, so last time I said that this one was going to be entitled Story Time and implied that it will probably be spooky story related because yesterday was Halloween for you guys. Um, Obviously, from my top, I'm filming this one right after the last one. <laughs> I know, I know, I should bother to get changed between these to give you guys a little bit more of a, yeah, the, the impression that I'm doing these a bit further apart. But as, as I mentioned in the last one, I'm still not feeling great well. And effort. Just being a little bit late. Okay. So, um... For those of you who tuned in last time, um, you will remember me mentioning that I used to do baton twirling. Um, now, one of the things the, the girls I used to do baton twirling with um, and I used to enjoy doing was telling each other spooky stories. Um, and I was always very good at it. <laughs> I, I don't know why. Um, I, I really have no idea why, but I was always really rather good at it. Um, so most of the stories I obviously told uh, were rehashes of ones I've heard other people telling um, and uh, the, the sort of the big one um, that I remember doing is um, Molly the Dolly. Um, it's kind of interesting my kind of relationship with that story because it did actually give me nightmares. <laughs> Um, slightly because it was kind of based on a, a kind of a reminiscence of, of one of the nightmares that I did kind of have around that sort of age. Anyway, um, and, and certainly I'm, I'm one of those who do, who do get kind of spooked and freaked out by, by certain things and it, it was a story that's very reminiscent of, of that. And remember I was only, only little, you know, I'm usually talking about like seven year old me, so give me some credit um <laughs> but i would do things like you know create sequels to to that story create other variations on that story um and it was it was definitely like a good kind of uh, a thing to sort of to sort of do it was a very communal kind of thing um i think telling spooky stories is a very sort of communal kind of thing to sort of do um and it, it definitely created a lot of camaraderie. I mean, I, I would definitely have said that, you know, the, the girls I did baton twirling with, um, I felt more like a group of friends than what I necessarily had at, at school around that sort of time, um, when I was a little bit more isolated um, and a little bit more alone um, for various reasons. Not that I didn't flat out, didn't have any friends at school, Near enough, <laughs> didn't have any friends at school, um, and especially after I sort of had a bit of a falling out with with um, uh, my my best friend at school at the time, um, and we didn't end up speaking to each other for a number of years. Uh, we are friends again now, interestingly enough. Um, but yeah, I because I felt much more isolated at school, having this sort of camaraderie um, in the battle playing troop was, was very important to me um, and the fact that one of the ways I can maintain it was by just being me and, and telling stories um, even if those stories did actually freak me out a little bit and I wasn't necessarily 100% the right person to have been telling them um, but then you know my my whole writing, like like even now, there's always been like a dark edge to it, um, and I'm I'm not afraid to sort of write things that make me un uncomfortable um, in sort of a fear level. Um, I do try to sort of make avoid writing things that make me uncomfortable on a moral level, um, but yeah, in in terms of you know things that make me like frighten me, um, I I think. That idea has also always sort of been in there, and I like sort of challenging that sort of um, that sort of way of thinking. Um, so yeah, um, <laughs> um, so now I'm going to sort of 
segue into into kind of story time. Um, <clears throat> so I guess you could sort of say that as well as sort of telling scary stories and enjoying being a uh, storyteller, um, you know, there, there's always been that very imaginative, very sort of creative part of me, but there's also sort of been that part of me that has always believed in the supernatural. Um, that's probably why I did get freaked out a little bit by telling a lot of those spooky ghost stories, because um, I had like a, a sort of belief there that, you know, that maybe this stuff is real, um, or could be real, or has the potential of being real. Um, so I believe I was seven or eight um, at the time. Um, and a friend and I were in what we were <laughs> what the local kids called the big field. Um, so I'll set this up a little bit for you guys. Um, near to where I live, and by near to where I live, I mean literally at the end of the street to where I live. Um, there was an area of grass that was known as the small field or the little field. Um, behind this, there was a hilly mountain. <laughs> I say the amount of there was a, a grassy hill um and part of this sort of grassy hill area um was fenced off um because it's actually cattle area um and it was a cow field um but the 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 grassy hill itself we we called the big field um and then behind that you had the woods um the woods in and of themselves yeah there's there's definitely spookiness about the woods, um, but this particular story um, involves the, the big field and actually the cow field, part of the big field, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Um, so a friend of mine, um, I don't think she was a locally living friend, I think she was a friend uh, that had come from, from somewhere else, I don't think she was one of the, the girls I kind of knew um, in, in the local streets <laughs> in the local streets in the local neighborhood um neighborhood that i live um anyway we were we were in the, the, the cow field um and we were finding all the spaces in the blackberry bushes um where you could sort of set up a den kind of area because i was the kind of girl who would climb trees in in skirts and jump down from those trees and kind of be a bit of a tomboy um without feeling the need to dress boyishly. Um, so the idea of having a bit of a den appealed to me and the fact that the particular friend that I was with um, was also more um, tomboyish um, had absolutely no objection to creating, uh, creating a few dens. So we were going, going along and we had this blue tape with us. Um, we were marking out all the, all the little areas where we particularly wanted, you know, where, where we thought uh, we, we can make this into a den. And it was surprising just how many big areas there were uh, behind these bushes. Um, I think maybe it's because I was a lot smaller back then. <laughs> I'm not sure they would necessarily have felt as big now, uh, sort of retroactively speaking. But, you know, back, back then they, they were quite like, nice sized little areas that we, we were able to find. Anyway, I had a time I needed to, to go back to essentially get more time to go out to play. I don't know if this is a thing anymore, <laughs> but certainly when I was younger, it was a thing where you were told, OK, you can be out um, until this time and you need to come back and check in um, and then you can get more time and then you can go back out again. Um, it was certainly something that, that I had to do sort of growing up. Um, so I was just because I was on a slightly different time to, to, to the other girl, which actually I think maybe makes her, must, she must have lived locally. <laughs> she, she must have been one of the ones that lived locally. Um, maybe she, she moved away and was with us in town. I, I don't know. Anyway, she was, she was on a slightly different, um, slightly different, different time to me. So I was heading back um, along the field and I heard somebody calling my name. 
So I stopped and I turned and looked around. I couldn't see anybody. So I thought, okay, maybe I'm imagining things. And I kept walking. And then I heard somebody call my name again. So again, I stopped and I looked around. Couldn't see anybody. I couldn't see my friend. Um, so again, I was like, oh, okay, maybe, maybe I'm just imagining things. Um, so I was about to start walking again when my friend suddenly came racing over to me and she was like, were you just calling me? I said, no, no, I wasn't. Um, I was you know, trying to make it back so that I wasn't late back. Um, that's very important. Very important that you weren't late back because I wouldn't be able to go back out again. <laughs> um, but anyway, she, she was like, well, were, you, were you calling me? Um, I was like, were you calling me? And she was like, no. And I was like, okay, this is a bit weird. Um, now, me being the incredibly imaginative um, and, quite frankly, silly little girl that I was, <laughs> immediately started telling a ghost story. Um, kind of instantly using, like, the fragments of what we'd been doing as the basis um, for, for this ghost story. And yeah, it was, it was enough to, to scare my friend. <laughs> um, and we both sort of raced out of the field um, and we didn't, we didn't return for the rest of the day. Um, I think we went back to one of our houses um, in the end, um, obviously after I got more time. <laughs> that was very important. Um, I think we probably went back to mine. Um, that seems like the most likely thing that would have happened then. Um, so, as, as I said, I, you know, as, as an adult, I can kind of go, yes, we were two little girls being, being kind of silly. Um, certainly me, in, in terms of telling that story, it's a complete fabrication, very quickly based on, you know, the things that just happened. And I told it in an effective enough way that I scared her and I was very good at freaking myself out anyway. So, <laughs> it's no wonder it scared me too. Um... But the sort of the thing about that is if I believe her um, and she really wasn't the person who'd been calling my name, I still don't know who he was. I still don't have an explanation for who he was. Um, it, um, it certainly wasn't a clear enough voice and it was a slightly distant voice. So it's really hard to kind of say, you know, Maybe it might have been one of our parents or one of my parents, um, even though I wasn't late back at that point. So I don't see why it would have been. Um, and it's not something my parents ever did. So although that, that's kind of like a possible explanation, it's not really a very good explanation. Um, and it's certainly one of those things that, you know, as, as far as I'm concerned, you know, there, there isn't really an explanation for, for what kind of happened back then. And certainly, you know, wasn't the thing that sort of started me believing in, in the possibility of the supernatural. I think that belief was kind of there already. But it's always been one of those things where I've kind of looked back on it, you know, even if it is a little bit silly, even if maybe my friend was lying and she was calling my name and she was just trying to freak me out. Um... Or something like that, because I, I I know she was a little bit older than me. You know, she wasn't like my age. She was a little bit older than me. She probably why she had like longer before she needed to go back to get more time. <laughs> but it's it's one of those things. That I kind of always look back on it, and I'm kind of like, yeah, in, in my head, that is kind of you know, an encounter with a ghost that I almost certainly had. Um, whether or not you know anybody else would ever sort of see it that way or kind of believe that it was, you know. I can't sort of shape the feeling that, yeah, no, no, it, it it was real or real enough. And it was something that's kind of stuck with me. And, you know, if I was, I was seven then and in my 30s now, <laughs> believe it or not, <laughs> you know, it, for it to sort of stuck with me for so long and to still sort of be that kind of thing that I, I remember and quite vividly remember um, 
you know, even if I'm not sure hundred percent now of all the sort of minute little details, I still, you know, remember that feeling. I still sort of remember feeling like there wasn't a real explanation. I knew, you know, my story was made up. I'm silly. <laughs> but I still don't feel like there was a real explanation for what I heard that day. Um like even now, even as like a rational adult, knowing yeah, there there are certain possibilities and yeah, she probably were lying when she said she wasn't the one calling my name. Um, you know, even now as a kind of rational adult, I'm still like, yeah, there there's every possibility that was actually a ghost. Um don't know why. I, I don't know who of. Uh I certainly, you know have no idea why I'm so sort of set on, you know, that has to be something that kind of really happened. Um but again and it it does all come down to to belief, I I guess. Um, and I'm I'm somebody I do definitely kind of believe in the supernatural. And as I said, as a child, I could easily freak myself out with certain things. And I don't know, maybe it's all sort of a part of that. Maybe it's all part of that kind of um, culture that I kind of had um, around me at the time where spooky stories were more than just spooky stories, there was there had was like an element of truth to them. Um, certainly, you know, in terms of how I felt about them as, as a kid, but, you know, I still sort of feel in my own mind that is probably one of the, if not the spookiest real thing that kind of happened to me. Um, I mean, a lot of the spookiness I, ex I experience now, I know it's it's you know self-inflicted I've seen or I've watched something that's kind of freaked me out a little bit and everything else is just you know shadows um and the fact that I live on my own <laughs> um you know it, it is very easy to sort of speak yourself even you know as an adult um when you're living on your own <laughs> um but in terms of sort of like real spookiness in, in terms of something that has genuinely kind of resonated with me and, and kind of lasted with me that is kind of the spookiest thing that has ever happened to me um whether or not you know there was a re another explanation for what happened um almost certainly there was another explanation for what happened i'm never going to feel completely unconvinced that it wasn't something supernatural um which might be kind of weird but you know some people just like to have that kind of, you, you can't sort of go back in time and recapture these moments um, and, and redo them and re-go over them and make them into something that they're not. So if something kind of resonates with you in a particular way and it does become particularly hard for you not to see it in that particular way, then is there really anything wrong in kind of seeing it in that particular way, even if you can explain it in other ways even if you can kind of go oh yeah no as a logical rational adult um my friend was probably most definitely calling my name and trying to trick me and trying to spook me out not realizing that i would be able to spook her out even more by reversing the situation on her therefore um but yeah the the fact that you know very much it has resonated with me, with me as this kind of, you know, that that was genuinely a ghost and that sort of spooky sense that I that I had back then, I can still very clearly kind of remember it now and I kind of hold, held on to it like that. It's maybe not completely normal, but yeah, I think sometimes we do, we do kind of do those things to ourselves um, and yeah, it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, okay. So I think that's story time kind of done with. Um, I know I've done this one in a sort of a interesting way, and most of the reason why I did it in an interesting way, where I sort of started off in one kind of vein and then kind of shifted into another kind of vein. Um, it's because I actually didn't know how long I'd be able to talk about um, my own personal spooky story. Um, so I was like, I need to need to have a little bit of filler just so that I can sort of make sure that this is like long enough. And then actually I did manage to talk about the other spooky story for a little bit longer than I thought I would be able to. Um, I know I haven't told it in a particularly spooky way. Um, 
I do apologise. Um, it's not so much that amount of practice of telling spooky stories, but, you know, this is also a lot of reminiscing and stuff for me. Um, speaking of, um, I've decided that at least the next vlog, which I believe is currently entitled Growing Up, as kind of like a loose, uh, loose sort of title for it, um, and yeah, I've decided that my next few, at least my next one vlog, will be kind of me sort of reminiscing and sharing with you little bits and pieces and little stories um, from my past that uh, might be particularly interesting um, or relevant. Um, as I said, I'm not completely sure at this point what what I'm going to do next um, and how I'm going to sort of approach doing these. Um, whether or not I'm going to make them a little bit more like story time um, or if I'm going to like keep getting distracted by my own thoughts in, in minute details <laughs> um, and things like that. Um, but yeah, I think I want to sort of share a little bit more of my, my own past with you. Um, I think it might kind of help a little bit with explaining why the Nevratan series um, kind of resonates with me so much because even though it's set before I was born, um, for the most part, um, certainly, uh, certainly the colours I see is definitely set before I'm born. So it's definitely talking or harkening back to a time period that I didn't grow up in. Um, it, it's a lot closer to the time period that I grew up in than now is. So I think there is still sort of that kind of nostalgia for it there. And, um, and I think, you know, maybe sharing some of my own personal nostalgia um, might be a good way to go, uh, <laughs> she says. Um, we'll see. We'll see how it, how it goes and how it sort of pans out. Um, all right. Anyway, uh, I hope you guys have sort of found this very weird ramble interesting. Um, I hope you're kind of interested to see what kind of happens next time and, and where I sort of take this new train of thought next time. And with that said, I will see you guys next time. See ya. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya.